So, Friday, The Legend of Vox Machina finally released on Amazon Prime. Years of waiting, millions of dollars, and the show is finally here. I spent my Friday watching it with Crick Crab, and to say the least, we both really, really enjoyed it. Alright, next episode. Oh, sh- This is awesome. That no, was awesome. Next episode yet. I need to tweet. This show is awesome, at least in our opinion. We really enjoyed the show. But why? Why does this show work so well? Why does it have 100% of Rotten Tomatoes right now? 96% with audiences, and you know how divisive those can get. Why has the show succeeded? What makes it so good beyond the fact that people like Critical Role? It's also gotten a good reception with people who have never seen the show, so what's up with that? Well, I think it's time to answer that question. Today, we are going to be reviewing The Legend of Vox Machina. Okay, let's start with art, animation, and character design. The art style of this show is a nice blend of western and anime type art styles, and I think it really works. The animation style is very similar to Avatar The Last Airbender. Very, very similar. It's a comparison that I came to immediately upon seeing it, and you know what? It works really well. I think this art style is perfect for the tone the show is trying to convey, and the tone of Critical Role in general. I don't think any other style would have worked here, so I think they picked that really, really well. Character design is also on point. I love how every single character design is simple, but the way they drew and animated their facial expressions really accentuates and showcases who these characters are. Keyleth is my favorite example. The way Keyleth is animated is absolutely perfect. Her facial expressions perfectly showcase this nervous, anxious character that she is in this show, and I absolutely love it. It just makes me fall in love with this character even more. This is the perfect example of blending an animation style and art style with the writing of the show, and I absolutely love it. And this goes for every single character, not just the main characters, but also for NPCs to a degree. Uriel Taldori has been giving this very assertive personality, and I absolutely love it. Combined with the voice of Carrie Payton and the design for Uriel has given him a characterization that I like a lot more in this show. In the original Critical Role campaign, Uriel was just the king, you know, the king guy, because we're in a fantasy show and therefore we need a king. Here, Uriel is much more of a character, much more distinct, and I like him a lot more here. And I think part of that is because of the amazing design of his character and the way he was drawn and animated. That's a nice segue into talking about animation. The animation here is really good. In scenes where the characters aren't fighting, just walking around, talking, the animation is really good. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I discovered maybe like one mistake on my fifth rewatch, and I don't know if it was just my eyes playing tricks on me because it was 2 a.m. or something, but overall the animation is really, really good. However, in fight scenes, I think that's where it is at its best. In fight scenes, it has this nice fluidity to it, and on top of that, the fights themselves are really well boarded out. And by that, I mean they're well choreographed, essentially. The fights here are clear. I never felt confused by what was happening. A lot of it was because the animation was also so fluid, but also because the fights are epic. Oh, shit. Oh, He's dead. oh my god. Oh, fuck! The animation really accentuates how good these fights are. If the animation wasn't good, then these fights simply wouldn't work. Luckily, the animation is great, meaning the fights here are great as well. Okay, overall, let's just cap all that off. That was a lot of information. Basically, the show looks really great. No matter where the characters are, no matter what they're doing, whether they're just walking around in a tavern or fighting a massive creature, I think the show looks great. The animation is fluid, the fights are clear. Great job on this front. Now, of course, good animation will only take a show so far. You need a good story as well. And here, I think this is where The Legend of Vox Machina really shows how different it is from a lot of the shows I end up enjoying recently. A lot of shows that I've enjoyed recently are enjoyable to me because they take big risks, because they're different, they're surprising. But those big risks, for me at least, only pay off 50% of the time. A lot of times I'll see a show take a big risk or try something new and different, and it doesn't work out. The Legend of Vox Machina, I'll be honest, I don't think it's taking many risks at all. The story is fairly standard for a fantasy story, but I don't think that that is a bad thing at all. To summarize the story, no spoilers, I'm just gonna go over the basic plot. The party are a bunch of misfits, 
Vox Machina, who are hired to fight a monster. That's it. It's pretty simple. But the story is still effective. I don't need every story to be revolutionary and different, moving forward the dial of storytelling in a new and innovative way. Sometimes I just want a fun plot, and that's absolutely what we got here. Now, that is not to say that the story and the writing is substandard. That's not what I'm trying to say here at all. It doesn't need to be revolutionary to be good, because it is good. The story here absolutely works, and in a way, it makes it feel all the more like a D&D &D game. This isn't a meta commentary on the nature of filmmaking or anything. It's a story about a bunch of people fighting a big monster, and you know what? That's awesome. That is not to say that the story never surprised me, because it absolutely did. I mean, no spoilers, I'm gonna censor all the spoily stuff, but just... Take a look at this reaction from me and Crit Crab. Wow! Oh yeah, no. Oh my god! Oh fuck! It speaks for itself. This show can absolutely get shocking with how, well, grim it can be. And that's absolutely great. That moment, I actually predicted that that would happen. And it still left me absolutely shocked when I actually saw it on screen. I think that's a testament to some damn good writing. Overall, the story here, while it's not revolutionary or anything like that, it certainly is good. It feels like a D&D game. I know the compliment of it feels like a D&D game sounds weird, but if you have played D&D and then watched the show, you'll absolutely see that. And I think that that's one of the best aspects of it. It's not overly convoluted, it's not trying to do so much, it takes a simple goal and it fulfills it. Trying to tell a simple story about this group of heroes. That's not to say it can't get more complicated later on, but starting out with a very simple plot to introduce these characters was a great move on their part, and I think it works really well here. These first three episodes present a clear arc, and I love it. Very well done on the writing front as well. This part was absolutely vital. They needed to nail these characters. In Critical Role, the characters are a really important part about why the show works. If the characters aren't compelling, the audience isn't going to be compelled to watch their hijinks for four plus hours in 100 episode seasons. So, did they succeed in making these characters work? For the most part, even in these first three episodes, I think they did. Now, we have seven, count them, seven main characters here, and yeah, that is a lot. One major criticism I have for a lot of movies and television shows these days is too many characters that don't get enough focus. Here, however, I think they focus on the right characters at the right times. Every single character here got a moment, or a few moments, to show off and to be a person, a character, show some complexity, show a little bit of depth. There are some great moments from every single character. Now, I will say that some characters get more pertinent moments than others. Vax being a definite standout here. For me and Crit Crab, well, Vax was definitely our favorite. Though maybe not for the same reason. Also, Vax looks like really hot in that suit. Uh, yeah, he looks, he looks pretty good. Not to say that the other characters were being shelled. Every single one of them got at least one moment to shine, and that is great. Another really important thing that they nailed was the character interactions. Ugh, this part was so important, and they definitely got it down. Another thing that makes Critical Role work is the fact that these players are all friends, and therefore they interact with each other very naturally. Here, they still interact with each other very naturally. The characters joke, rib each other, they feel like a group of friends. Because at this point in the story, they have been together for at least some time. And the ride-or-die nature of D&D &D parties, I love how it's illustrated here. One aspect of D&D &D that was absolutely carried into the show was how together a D&D &D party can be, the unity between them. Sure, they argue, they fight, but when things get serious, they get together to fight the threat. And I love that. The hero's call moment in this show was so, so good. I won't spoil it, you'll know it when you see it. It was epic and I loved it. The characters overall are really good here. That is in terms of main characters. Side characters, NPCs essentially. NPCs, I think most of them were good. Uriel Taldori and Gilmore were my favorites. Crit Crab's favorite too. The second he saw Gilmore on screen, 
he freaked out because, well, both of us thought it was perfect. Gilmore was so great here. Uriel Taldori was another favorite of mine, which again, I didn't expect because in the original Critical Role campaign, I didn't care for him at all. Here though, I think he's really, really cool. Does help that he's voiced by the amazing Carrie Payton. Now, Allura and Kima are two fan favorite NPCs that don't really get the spotlight in this show as of yet. We are only three episodes in. They could absolutely have the spotlight later on down the line, especially if they're gonna do other arcs from the campaign where those two NPCs are much more prominent. I don't know if I mentioned this, but Matt Mercer also gets a lot of cameos as a bunch of different NPCs, and he does a good job making each of them feel distinct because, you know, it's Matt Mercer. I'm also going to take this time to talk about voice acting. Voice acting for every single NPC, well, it's great. Every single one of the cast does a great job here, and we're only three episodes in. The main cast are doing great, all the guests that they brought in are doing great. Allura especially, her voice is absolutely perfect. I love the voice actress they chose for Allura. She's doing a great job portraying this character. It is exactly as I imagined. The star voice actor that a lot of people were hyped about was David Tennant, and yeah, here he does not disappoint. He plays a pretty major role in the first two episodes, and he's pretty great in that role. I've seen him in a similar role in another show, I won't spoil, but yeah, he's awesome. Great job on David Tennant, because, you know, it's, it's David Tennant. People were hyped for a reason, he's a good actor. Another standout of this cast is Grey Griffin as Delilah Briarwood. She nails that role. Her voice just oozes evil and condescension in every word, and it is perfect for Delilah's character. It is, it's amazing. I mean, seriously, that kind of casting is like a fan cast. I never would have thought that the voice actress behind Azula would be bringing this character to life in such a way, and I'm so happy that it is reality now. Basically, everyone in the cast were doing a great job, and I look forward to this cast continuing in more seasons, because we already have a season two greenlit, so Here's to getting these people back on to voice these characters more. Okay. Oh, that was amazing. First Interview three episodes. Bugman. First three episodes. How are we feeling? First three episodes. I could not feel better about them. I don't know what they could have done. In case you can't tell, I love this show. And I am so excited for the next episodes. We still have nine of them to go. That is crazy to me. These first three episodes have blown me out of the water, and there are still nine episodes left. That's just really exciting. There's so much content that can be put into this show, and beyond these nine episodes, we already have a season two greenlit? I mean, my hype is off the charts here, because these first three episodes have really impressed me. What I wanted from Legend of Vox Machina was a fun D&D &D animated show that showcases the hijinks and actions, epic and funny, of the first campaign of Critical Role, and that's absolutely what we've got. They promised, and then they delivered. And boy, did they deliver. This exceeded expectations. I haven't even talked about how the things that make this show good because I don't want to spoil them. I am excited for the future of the show, and I hope that you guys consider checking it out if you haven't checked it out already. If you guys enjoyed this episode of One Crispy Review, a show that I do every blue moon, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, then please do subscribe to Crispy's Tavern. We have a over 100 episode RPG horror story series that is still ongoing. You can go check that out in the cards and also subscribe if you want to get more of my content right when it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own thoughts, go down to the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment natural 20 to represent the role that this show had in production. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell. Mm -hmm.